Ladies and gents, please put your hands together for Mr. Jack O'Rourke. Thanks, Sid. Um, that Michael was actually meant to play the piano there, so <laughs> dodged the bullet. Um, just to say, um, delighted to be here. Thanks, Sid, for having me. Um, and it's exceptionally daunting um, to follow two great speeches like that. Um, so, yeah, just a bit about me. My name is Jack O'Rourke. I am a songwriter, um, an aspiring songwriter and a musician, and I'm also um, a part-time teacher, so you could say I'm leading a double life um, at the moment. Um, I actually am not used to public speaking at all. I told my sixth-year students today that I had to give a speech, and uh, one of my sixth-year um, boys said, imagine them all naked, and he said, no, don't do that. It could be dangerous. So, uh, um, But uh, I suppose, yeah, I, I, obviously the theme of the night is music, um, and um, I was wondering how I might bring my own personal touch to that. Um, I, it's a bit of a cliche, but I suppose I wanted to talk to you about being a songwriter and um, finding my own voice and I suppose my, um, my journey in doing that, which is, which is still pretty much a journey. Um, I wanted to talk to you about um, me being influenced by a lot of different people. I think when I first started off being a singer and a songwriter, um, I wanted to be um, I wanted to be my heroes and my heroines, for that matter. Um, but um, as you as you get older, I suppose you start you stop being an imitator and you try to be an original. So the first question I wanted to maybe put out to all of you is, um, what do you think an original is? Um, I haven't found the answer yet, but maybe you you, you might tell me. Um, so what makes an original? Um, I suppose there's a lot of ingredients. Um, I, s I actually watched the video that Aidan sent me of previous um, Smarter Egg talks, and I watched Joe's song, and he began his talk by saying that um, that John Spillane gave him a bit of advice, saying that to, to sing what you know about, you know, to not to try and emulate somebody else. Um, and um, I suppose honesty and the truth are two vital ingredients to to sing what you know, basically, you know. Um, so whether I'm singing about a love affair or writing about a pub crawl or a historical event or basically um, breaking myself up here, talking to a lot of people, um, the most important thing is keeping it real. Um, and I think that also applies to business too. Um, in my experience, I have very little experience of the business world. I luckily have the guys from Soap Buffer and Blue Monkey and Marlene and everybody else to help me out because... I, when it comes to consumerism and that kind of side of things, I, I really am completely incompetent. I once sold um, a couple uh, of suits when I worked in Brown Thomas for 50% um, more than their sale price. Um, so that, that I'll give you an, an example, okay? <laughs> um, but I suppose being a songwriter, my, my main aim is to sell my songs. And I think what I've learned is that they have to be credible and real. Um, so that's, that's kind of the main thing. Um, so finding my real voice was a bit of a struggle, um, you know, not just in music but in my life. And I think lots of things in my life, I suppose, I kind of hid behind. Um, before I came out as a gay man and um, I was kind of constantly adapting to fit in, um, I used to, um, I think in every aspect of myself, my walk, my talk, um, how I interacted with people, um, I became a master at mimicking. Um, I was the great pretender, and I suppose I kind of I lost track of what I was actually, what my soul was telling me to do, or what, it, or to kind of say, well, what's the truth? So I'm going to move over to the piano now. I was like, Michael isn't going to sing. I, I <laughs> start the news. Um, I learned very quickly to copy a lot of my favorite artists, so. I was a walking kind of covers band, and there's nothing wrong with that because I, I sang with a lot of covers band. But I became a bit of a musical magpie, um, and uh, I used to gargle whiskey, um, a lot of whiskey to sound like Tom Waits. So. <laughs> Think about your house about 2.45, sour strawberry surprise, a cherry popsicle. Right on time, the 
the big sweet mama that'll blow your mind out of your ice cream man. Um, I um, wore tight jeans and uh, <laughs> tight jeans a bit like tonight um, and kind of pranced around on stage and tried to act badass and match. I ended up more like a, a folky Freddie Mercury. <laughs> uh, I was trying to emulate this, you know. Hey little girl, is your daddy gone? Did she go and leave you all alone? You got a bad design. I went through a period as well of being obsessed with Stevie Nicks. I, I, like a lot of gay men, we all have our di divas, you know. She was my rap diva, her and Kate Bush. Um, I, I didn't bring a shawl tonight, so. <laughs> So I'm just going to move back over there. Um, I saw, I think I was around 23, and I, I embraced the country music that my dad played for me. Um, and I heard one of my favorite singers, Emmylou Harris, saying that um, style, she was, I think she was being asked, why don't you sing jazz? And she said, uh, I love Billie Holiday and I love Ella Fitzgerald, but uh, um, I plow a, a narrow terrain, which is, you know, country and bluegrass and Americana. And she said, style is a product of your own limitations. Um, and I think that's very much true um, when it comes to the arts and music. So I, um, I never was going to front the E Street Band um, and I wasn't going to smoke 20 fags um, a day, you know and be healthy enough to be Tom Waits, or I wasn't going to be pretty and magical like Stevie Nicks. So I said I'd try and tap into um, Jack O'Rourke, whoever that might be. Um, so honesty and truth again, and looking for that. So um, my songs changed, and a funny thing happened. As I began to, you know, to stop trying to emulate my heroes and heroines, um, I went back to my childhood. Um, I wrote what I know or what I experienced, and I found that people responded um, in a lot, just a lot better than they did before, you know? They came to my gigs, a lot more people, um, super fans, you might say. Um, um, they, they attended my gigs. Um, I found it easier as well to relate to an audience because I wasn't, I suppose, hiding behind a mask. Um, and it was liberating to sing my truth, and I suppose, uh, you know, we all try to be clever and find a, a new way of saying something, but um, the truth is the most important thing. Um, so, my song Silence, um, which was released last year, just a, another plug there for myself, very self-indulgent plug, um, is, I didn't consciously set out to write the song, but I kind of thought this hasn't been written about before in pop music, um, and as uh, Michael said, you know, it was it was a bit of luck that it was before the referendum, and um, you know, the song. I suppose I d I did ask for a kitchen from Santa, and uh, my mom and dad had the foresight and the the broad mindedness to to get me one, or Santa did, sorry, um, and uh, a few of my mates, some some of which are still my mates, they did they did laugh at me, and I remember you know feeling very very young, you know, okay, I'm a bit different. Um, and I suppressed that. And I suppose when I started writing about it years later, um, it did kind of open up, you know, the dam burst. Um, so um, it was released and as luck would have it, Amnesty picked up on it and it became a kind of an anthem for the referendum. And then the late, the late, late happened. And um, I suppose just from myself to yourselves, um, you know, outside of sexuality and beyond it, it's a song, I suppose, that could be about any form of suppression. 
um, or you know trying to be what you can't be. Um, and I just I suppose urge you in business and uh, I don't have all the answers, but it, you know whatever whatever your career choice may be or whatever you hope to do, that to to, to, to look for the truth because I think the truth will always out. You know, and uh, people will always respond to the truth. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it. I'd like to um, just sing that song and uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. Cheers. <laughs> okay. For John Deere's, he liked bright colors and glamour on his bedroom wall. She's lambs and chandeliers. Could park around with Schlitter, but he ran away from the ball. The oldest in the litter, but felt gangly when standing tall. Been banged, plastic tea sets strengthened up that wrist when they left at school. Blue tacked Robbie Fowler's hat trick made a boxing fist, staying safe by playing the fool. Smoothed out goose pimples when Cala sang VZ Dante. Called over the play. Walk like a man, keep your shoulders broad. Ease upon your mincing, you'll fit in with the crowd. What becomes of silent song? With longing in their hearts to take a breath and break out in song without sounding wrong to break out in song without sound. For all except himself, without an acting guide, his real persona is in a coma. Love's left on the shelf, can't show his other side. Small talk with handsome strangers, he looks down as they see through his guise. A brush without a painter. On a canvas blank with hopeless denial that'll walk like a man, keep your shoulders broad, ease upon your mincing, you'll fit in with the crowd. What becomes of silent song?
Thank you. Cheers.